Hello everyone and welcome back to my Transgalactic Trek in Elite Dangerous and we're picking up where we left off in this system with a B-type star in the center and some dwarfs that we have yet to discover which I'm going to start off with in this episode. So here I am in my hauler. Just a reminder that we are still flying a hauler here. And I've got these unexplored uh, dwarfs that are orbiting around the B-type star and they're really easy to spot. They're the purple ones. And of course, because they're such dim little dwarfs, there's no way they could be part of the background because the background is all very distant stars and you wouldn't be able to see these dwarfs from that distance. So they have to be part of the system. So it's relatively easy to figure out which ones I'm looking for. And each of them has all sorts of little planets slash moons of their own, depending on how you look at it. Don't know whether to call them. I guess we'll just call them planets in general. Though, uh, unless uh, it's obviously a moon around the planet, then, then we'll go with that. But yeah, lots and lots, you can see. And so I spend a little bit of time making sure I hit all of these. And uh, the gas giants slash dwarfs, <laughs> even they have multiple possible designations. I don't think they'll actually shrink into gas giants. They'll probably remain dwarfs, but they have little rings around them as if they were gas giants. And this one is actually a proper star, isn't it? And it's got little things of its own. So again, I take my time making sure this system is fully explored because this one I think I will get credit for if I can get the data back to civilized space in time before somebody else gets back. So uh, yeah, I make sure to hit all the spots. And I even see a little spot there. You can see a little bunch of stars well, not really stars, lights. And as I get closer, clearly that is a mini system of its own. How many objects? Six, so one center body and five orbiting objects. And so this is all very exciting. We'll, we'll see a lot of these purple planets with rings around them. That seems to be a theme now. Quite a lot of those. Alright, so we've wrapped this system up, and this is what it ended up looking like at the end. We've got a carbon dioxide rich thing there, no atmosphere there, no atmosphere, 100% metal. 100% metal planet, that's something. Okay, lots of rocky planets, well, but they're really cold, I guess. Um, yeah, nothing spectacular, nothing obviously habitable. Okay, so picking our next target. I, I'm constantly frustrated by the fact that it defaults to economical routes. Well, not constantly, just right at the beginning of every time I wish to begin playing the game. Uh, yep, yeah, but anyway, simple enough to fix. And off we go. Now, this is my first episode in Elite Dangerous 1.2. Uh, this was, of course, recorded uh, more than a week ago, and I have discovered an issue. And that issue is that whenever I go to the system map, it shows me the map for the previous system first. And then I, if I go out and then try system map again, then it loads up the proper system. Now, I don't know if this is just me, of course. I'm, I'm not using any sort of modification, obviously, so uh, I assume it's just a general problem. But anyway, this is the actual system that we've just reached with a lot of tiny little uh, planets. One thing that they have improved in version 1.2 is the heat indication. Now you don't constantly hit 100% heat. So now I have faith that when it says 100% heat, I'm probably actually doing damage. Whereas before it used to be really doing damage at 120 or so. So I like that a lot more. I decided not to explore this system, and that's because I'm sort of developing sort of a minimum standard for the kinds of systems I'm going to spend time on. And what I really want is these sorts, A-type stars and B-type stars. I, I don't want to spend too much time on MKs, uh, maybe a G-type star is okay or an F, but mainly trying to spend my time on high-grade stars like these. There's an F-type. 
And so here I'll try and explore these stars around this A-type star, see if there's anything interesting going on. I see a likely target there, and the question is whether it's the G-type or F-type. Now if you saw the system map, the G-type is closer. And so we have discovered just one astronomical object, so it doesn't have a little planet around it. Which is a shame, because it is a G-type star, and maybe, maybe there'd be some interesting little planet that could be habitable. But then I start scanning around for the F-type star, but I don't really get a, get a ping on it. I can't find it. And again, the system map shows that's further out than the G-type. The G-type is sort of paired with the A-type and the F-type is sort of hanging out out there but I couldn't spot it and ultimately I had to give up based on time I have to move on and that's the reason why I'm sort of setting a minimum threshold but I'm not going to be really consistent about it as you will see but yeah I do want to expedite things keep things moving now this is another good type star that looks like an F type to me and so do we hang out here like I said G type F type are more borderline but I didn't find anything around it actually the ping received no new bodies in the immediate vicinity and so I moved on And this is the sort of star that's right out. It's not, not really interesting. It's got some nice flares though. It's just got one thing around it. And it's already been discovered. That's a little bit of a shock. Zacchaeus already discovered this, this little star and its planet. And that causes me to worry that maybe that my first destination has already been discovered as well, so now I've got some concern. We still haven't cleared the area where explorers have already covered. I still haven't hit an old type star nobody else has hit, so that's the issue. Only asteroids around these are apparent, so I move on. So just a reminder for those that might be watching for the first time, of course our main goal our main goal is to actually get to the other side of the galaxy, like to cross the galactic center. And only a secondary goal is to make new discoveries. And a tertiary goal is to just get credits uh, from any discovery, even if somebody else has made it already we would get credits for doing an additional mapping or scanning. So this system, an M-class star, it's got some planets around it, but it's not good enough to meet my threshold, so I just move on. Those planets look like overgrown asteroids anyway. That's how I justify it. Uh, but I, I'm not getting much luck in these random hits. Of course I have a destination that's particularly juicy, but then uh, we've got all these stars that are on the way and you'd like those stars to be really interesting somehow. Nine objects and around this point I'm getting a little bit guilty, feeling a little bit guilty about uh, I'm getting that thing where it uh, it gives me this system map of the previous system instead of the new system. I'm I get that constantly, i am got to cut out most of the occasions, but this is the new system. And you can see it could have been very confusing to me, but uh, because they're a pretty close system. But uh, yep, I decide that I feel a little bit guilty about not exploring and I just go ahead with this. Honestly, I'm not going to be very consistent about it. It basically comes down to how much time I have and what I'm feeling at the time, whether I've, I'm really especially impatient about getting on to the next thing or whether I'm willing to hang out for a little while getting the star uh, the planet information methane rich methane rich is good look at that nitrogen methane ammonia that's that's pretty good stuff right there okay moving right along can't even see this star I thought I had found something interesting but no it's a dull little thing that's all and the next star is my first target, so... 
I'm sort of thankful that there's no new astronomical objects so that I can move on. So this is my first target, an O-type star. And the question of course is, has it been discovered yet? I think these HD stars have already been discovered, it's just... They're too obvious. There's nothing interesting around it, so who got credit? Okay, Exer Spire. Now you'll notice we've seen these names before. Exer Spire, Zacchaeus have been credited with many discoveries, and I guess they're just really outgoing, or maybe they just uh, got into it in the beta phase and got credit for it like that. I don't know. But uh, probably just outgoing. I mean, it's not too hard to outpace me. I'm not going very quickly. But anyway, I had an intended destination, and you can say, see that I'm typing in Blaythua UY-S E3-11, which I'll simply refer to as E3-11 from now on. And so I'm going to continue trying to have specific targets as we move along. I'll scan ahead. And so for the next two episodes, I actually have a list of stars that I have as waypoints. Now this is a good star on the way, well, an F-type at least. So a borderline star. Let's see if there's anything around it. Okay, well, one object. And has it been discovered yet? No, okay, well, I guess we can take care of that one little planet there before moving along. Yep. Okay. And so a very quick flyby of this one. And then we are ready to proceed. Now E3-11 is just a B-type star. It's nothing too special, but I'm hoping that I'll get credit for it, obviously. So that's the thing. This is an M-class. Uh, with seven new astronomical objects. Asteroids or... oh, at this point I noticed that I had two messages there so I had to take care of those. I hadn't actually used the message system ever and so uh, it was my first time noting that and it took me like a few minutes to figure out how to navigate that little thing. So yeah, but anyway, cleared those two up and moved on to... oh, I remember what happened. I was gonna move on to the next star but then I saw that the that the stuff in the system was just sort of neatly arrayed in front of me. And naturally, if it's just sitting there right in front of you, you can hardly resist, right? So yeah, I decided to explore the system even though it is an M-class system. And uh, that gives the idea how consistent I'm going to be about this sort of thing. Well, here's an interesting star, right? It's got two objects around it. It's probably a little dim thing. And class as well, Red Dwarf. And that one's even worse, an L class Brown Dwarf. But anyway, I get through it and move on. Well, one accurate thing that you discover from this game is that the, the universe is really filled with these little M class uninspiring little stars and the really nice bright stars that you see when you look up at the night sky those are the rarities. Anyway we've got four almost identical looking planets around this one and that looks like a very boring sort of situation so I just move on. I really wonder how many credits I've made since I last left Civilized Space. I haven't really kept track of the number of stars and planets I've discovered. Really should have kept the running tally, but didn't do that. Keep a little logbook. I've, I've sort of been treating these videos as my logbook. I've made them very complete. But I haven't just kept a tally. Okay, well, one little unexplored planet. And uh, when you just got one like that, might as well do it, I guess. I didn't go for that other red star, I just moved on after pinging this planet. 
So we are past uh, 2,000 light years into the galaxy. I'm hoping by the end of the next two episodes, I'll be more than 3,000. I'll tell you more about my plans at the end of this episode. Well, three new objects, but they're sort of like that. I, I wonder if the game is keeping them mysterious. Maybe they are maybe they are much more interesting plants than they seem when I go to the system map. So I, I do some exploring and it turns out that there are more planets than I was expecting. You can see two binary pairs here. Well not really binary. There's one binary pair and then one planet with a moon. And so you can see them all arrayed. I There's a methane rich one. Not sure that's indicative of anything. Helium and neon. Nitrogen and argon. Helium and neon. At least they have atmospheres and all. Helium atmosphere. But nothing that jumps out at you. Nothing like nitrogen oxygen. Nothing that uh, looks exactly like Earth. But of course... You know, why would you expect that to be too frequent? Well, I already spawned the next destination there, so there's no way I was going to hang around here very long. So, our actual target for the end of this episode is E3-11, but this this star, E3-12, was one I was eyeing as well, because it's a B-type, and it's nearby to E3-11. And so I'm hoping to have this one in my Explorer's Belt as well. The question is, has it been explored? And yes, it has. Navzarton, and you might remember that name. We've uh, been to a system explored by Navzarton before. But as with that other system, the the planets have not been discovered. It was just a star that's been painted. Apparently, Navzarton uh, focuses on the really big fish. I don't know. I haven't seen one where Navzarton actually completely cleared the system yet. So I decide to do the cleanup for Navzarton. Worst things could happen. But uh, this is not making me feel too happy, of course, because we're still not clear of the areas that other explorers have, have ventured through. And in the next couple of episodes, I'm going to be aiming to divert away. I'm going away from the, the direction I've been so far heading. Just a little bit. Of course, we are still headed towards the center of the galaxy, but sort of skewing away from that. But anyway, some nice little gas giants here, or uh, Titori, nearly stars. And this one, a golden planet there. This is a nice little profile view of the, of the ring around the planet. And then there's this other system to look at. Remember, we just started with a few little things, and now we're finding all sorts of objects. Six new ones right there. And so ultimately, the system looks like this. We've got a few rocky plants around there, a little spare giant there with a ring around. And some other fairly large giants with uh, some moons. So now we're back on the road to E3-11, and that's where I want to end this episode. Here's an F-type, and I honestly don't remember whether I paid attention to this one or not. We'll see. Well, there's seven astronomical objects around it. Ooh, lots of little guys. Well, uh, well, the convenient thing is that there there are two sets of binary planets, so that's very enticing because that makes it a lot easier when they're sort of paired up like that. So yeah, I go through it. There's a binary pair right there. Very nice. Wonder if it's possible to have three planets orbiting each other somehow. Wonder if we will see one of those ever. That would be really interesting. I end up heading even to the B star in the system and finding a bunch of stuff around that. So we have 
two full planetary systems to work with and I'll uh, show you that in a sec here but right now I'm just trying to make sure I get a good ping on all the stuff around this one so here's the system map and so instead of just uh, six plants that we initially saw I ended up with a total of what is that ten around the first star right there and so I completed those I uh, will eventually explore those three out there but uh, altogether another nine planets around the companion star so let me just uh, show you I did explore those so I completed the system to the best of my knowledge and uh, with that I decided to continue finally heading to E3-11 and here it is very nice looking star and will a ping show that it's a very populous system well three is not bad I was hoping for more let's see and here I showed because clicking system map directly always gave the previous system now in version 1.2 I figured out that I should go to galaxy map first then click the system and then it give me the correct system so I'll have to remember to do that as long as this bug persists but uh, well we've got these other gas giants slash brown dwarfs or other class dwarfs to explore and they never fail to have stuff around them so so here I go lots of stuff you can see uh, two little very likely pairs there uh, the bright ones are probably just a planetary pair. Then there's that purple one with something next to it. That's even more interesting. So here we go. So there's the first, what seemed like only two lights ended up being a lot more than that. High middle content planet. Always nice to see those. That's better than icy planet. And then I head on to the second pair. And look at that mess of little bodies. Nine new astronomical objects. Looks practically like a solar system. You can see a wayward little moon there. Sort of like a Kuiper Belt object kind of thing. But yeah, a lot. Uh, this, you can see right in front there another purple spot with some lights around it. And indeed, that's another little system. So this E3-11 turned out to be a very, very populous place after all. So I took my time with it. I... As long as I get back uh, quickly enough, I will get exploration credit for this. I will be the discoverer unless somebody else comes here and uh, goes back first. There's an obvious risk, of course. I'm making videos about all these things, and so you guys could swoop in and take credit from me, but that's all right. I'm not too perturbed by that at all. Again, uh, I have my, my order of priorities and the first priority is trying to get through to the galactic center and I will persist on that so yeah I did the exploration as well as I could and I got all of these planets and moons and pseudo gas giants that might be brown dwarfs and in the next episode I hope to make some distance and so I've got uh, four targets listed and then Hopefully that'll get us a good distance in. And then in the following episode, I have targets in the next uh, sector, the Smojue sector. And so I've got three particular targets for that episode. And I'm also looking at uh, two uh, likely destinations, uh, Thor's Eye and Lagoon Nebula. And so I wonder if we might want to take a close look at those. All right. 
So with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.